A few months ago, I had the chance to trade something I was selling for a used fixie. I was already looking to build a new bike to ride around town, so this was perfect timing. The bike was a 2010 Kona Paddy wagon. And by my calculations, if I sold everything but the frame, I would get the same amount of cash as the value of the item I was trading it for. There was one problem, however. The seat post was stuck. I've worked on a lot of bikes through the years and never gave up on a project because of a stubborn seat post. And then this guy showed up. Houston, we have a problem. I mean, I tried everything. Copious amounts of penetrating oil, brute force with a pipe wrench, cutting slots and an attempt to fold the seat post onto itself. I even tried to pour boiling water on the frame to get the steel to expand and then plunge rapidly the exposed parts of the seat post in salted ice water to get it to contract rapidly and hopefully separate the two pieces. But nothing worked. After all of this, there was only one thing left to do. Use this chance to shoot a cool video, play with some potent chemicals and attempt to melt the seat posts. For this project, first we are going to need 100% pure light crystals and some tap water. Light is a alkali chemical or sodium hydroxide, also called caustic soda. Light will burn your skin, damage your eyes, and release fumes when mixed with water that can harm the lungs, so protection is a must. The most important part of your protective gear will be a good pair of rubber gloves. You also want a mask rated for chemical fumes and good eye protection. All exposed skin needs to be covered, so wear long sleeves. When it comes to your workspace, doing it outdoors is recommended, but a professionally ventilated space will do. Also, protecting your workspace with a tarp or cover is a good idea. Okay, one more time, I can't stress this enough. This is dangerous stuff, so take precaution. Okay, now that we are done prepping our workspace, we can move on to getting the frame ready for the caustic soda. To keep the mixture from pouring out, I wrapped some plastic bag around the seat tube using Gorilla Tape. I was really interested in seeing how the paint would be affected by the whole process, so I left most of it exposed. I also wrapped some Gorilla Tape around the water bottle bosses in an attempt to keep the liquid inside the seat tube. But as you will see later in this video, this did not work at all. Finally, all was left to do is place a plastic bag on the other side of the bottom bracket shell to keep the caustic soda from pouring out on the other side. Okay, we're now ready to do the mix. For this batch, I'm using a 30% light crystal to 70% water ratio. Another very important safety element to remember is never ever pour water into lye. Always lie into water. If you pour water into lye, you risk causing a violent reaction and end up covered in this stuff. Once the caustic soda gets hot, you can start pouring it down the bottom bracket shell. Pour only a little bit at a time, wait a little bit, then pour some more. Don't do what I did, only mix about half a bottle. It's a lot easier to handle and will minimize spills you're getting. You can really see here why you should not be doing this without gloves. Eventually, the caustic soda will react with the aluminum and you will notice some smoke and even the caustic soda pouring out of any openings in the frame. At this point, all you have to do is keep topping up the soda and wait patiently for it to do its job. For me, the whole process took about 3 hours, and I finished just before it got completely dark. I used all of the 500ml light crystal bottle, and I was really happy I covered the workspace because it got really messy and made the cleanup much easier. Now let's have a look at the paint. As you can see, wherever the caustic soda was pulling, it did a real number on the paint job. 
I was trying to figure out why my frame set got hit so hard when all the accounts I had of this process only mention a dulling of the clear coat maybe and then it dawned on me. I don't know if you can see it on this image but the blue of this frame set is actually a metallic blue. And unfortunately, some metallic paints are made with aluminum dust. Knowing all this, I really think that this is why the soda attacked the paint job as it was attacking the seat posts. And this is why the damage was so extensive. So if you're planning on doing this on a metallic frame set, maybe take extra precaution to protect the paint. Now, what about the seat post? Did I melt it all? No, as you can see, there's still a little sliver left on the inside of the C2. Now the sliver was super thin and it was really easy to remove using just some basic tools. No issues here. In the end, this saved my frame. And for three hours of easy work, I really can't complain. So I'm really satisfied with the end results. I will definitely try that technique again if I come across a seat post that's too hard for me to remove using the traditional means. If you find any value in this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button down below. Also, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. I will see you next time.